So today on the 190D, I want to go ahead and run some vacuum tests. Uh, currently, I'm having a couple issues. Uh, one being the brakes are really soft unless you push all the way down on the brake pedal. And the other issue is I'm unable to shut the car off. Uh, I believe this all should tie back to the vacuum pump. So we're going to go ahead and run some tests and see if the vacuum pump is pulling enough pressure and uh, what's going on there with that system. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button and you can also subscribe for more videos on the 190D. I've been creating a decent amount of videos on this car. Also, I have a BMW 3 Series that I make videos for on occasion. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more videos on this. So the person I purchased the car from reached back out to me and they found some more parts and they were willing to mail them to me. So I got some more parts for the car that they had stored and it's the radiator hoses. So here's the one that goes on the lower left side of the radiator. And then this is probably familiar to all of you. This is the top right radiator hose. So yeah, in time, I'll probably replace these. Of course, I'd have to drain the whole coolant system, so I'm not gonna do that quite yet. Uh, but yeah, so that was nice of him to go ahead and send those back to me. So I just picked up this vacuum gauge tester from Harbor Freight. Cost about $12. I know I could get pretty much the same thing at AutoZone for about $44. I wasn't about to spend that much money um, because all I needed was this meter piece. Uh, so I used that, or I'm gonna use this uh, to test my vacuum pump. It comes with a meter, comes with um, a bit of hose. I think this is, you know, maybe, you know, it's more than a foot long probably. And then it comes with a bunch of a adapters. So you can, uh, comes with this adapter. One or a couple adapters that would be great uh, for compression tests are, I believe this, you can use these for your cylinders to test your cylinder compression. Uh, AutoZone, again, had this same kit for about $45. Um, this Harbor Freight was about 12. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and test the vacuum pump. You can see the vacuum over here. The pump's right down here. There's my pump. This is where the brake booster line would connect to. And then this rubber hose just connects into here. And that goes into the car probably for like HVAC controls or my, um, when you shut the key off, it, this is probably what sends the vacuum there. So my, my air pump's right there. I'm gonna plug this hole and connect it to this line, see how much pressure I'm getting. So this part's a little bit difficult to hear just because the engine is running, but essentially what I did was I plugged the hose coming out of the meter into that smaller tube that was sticking out of the air pump and then I'm putting my hand over the opening that leads to the brake booster. And what this is doing is just isolating uh, any holes in the air pump. That way it pulls all the suction and gives a proper reading to the meter. So I've disconnected my brake booster line over here and I now have my gauge hooked up to uh, this connection. I want to see if this makes any difference. Uh, previously I was getting pressure up to about 12 PSI I believe, uh, or not PSI, but it was falling between the 10 and the 15. I know ideally it should be 19 so it would be in the green. Uh, I have read on forums that if you're getting at least up to 13 you know, the different parts should function properly. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Again, I read that on a forum, but I am getting between 10 and 15. So if I'm gonna test this side, I wanna see, or test this connection, I wanna see if this is any better, if I get any better uh, suction here. So I'm gonna turn the car on, and then I'm gonna hold the other end with my hand to cap that off, and then see the reading that I get.
So the engine's been on for a, close to a minute now, and I'm getting a different reading. Initially, I was only getting up to 9 or 10, but now that the engine's settled down a little bit, I'm getting a little bit higher of a reading. It's going almost to 15. So it looks like as we go along, it's going higher even now. I'm up to 14. It's actually increasing. So I am getting close to 15 inches of vacuum here. It's actually right on 15. Okay, so here I've gone ahead and reconnected the hard line to the brake booster. And it has dropped down and it's holding steady at 13 PSI. Or 13 inches of vacuum. So one thing I noticed is that I'm up to 20 inches of vacuum, and that's after revving up the engine a little bit. I just revved it up here. It has shot straight up to 20, and it's holding. So I think my vacuum pump is actually working well. At first I thought it wasn't working. I'm curious if it's just because every time I'm testing it, I'm testing everything at idle. Okay guys, so we are now in the car and I'm gonna show you something. So hopefully you can see this, but my gauge has dropped back down because as I pump the brakes, it drops back down. But if I idle, or if I bring the idle up, it boosts the gauge back up and then as I pump the brakes, comes back down. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a constant pressure or if something's actually wrong there. Okay, so I just pulled the car back into the garage after running those vacuum tests. Um, honestly, that opened up more questions than it did answers. I don't know if the vacuum system should hold a constant 20 inches of pressure, or if it's okay that it fluctuates between 10 and 20, depending on how much you're revving. So in this case, guys, if you have an answer, go ahead and put, those, put that in the comment section, because right now what I'm gonna have to do is go back and do a lot of research I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. Uh, I'm not really familiar with these complex vacuum systems. Uh, as you may be aware that this is not very common on modern cars to have a vacuum system set up this way. So if you do have an answer, go ahead and leave that in the comment section. Uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and read through those and then see if any of those suggestions work for what's, what's happening with my vacuum pump. I'm hoping that I don't have to get a new one. They're not exactly cheap. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see from there. So thanks for watching guys, and I hope to see you on the next video